your beginners run one mile. What do you do next? So the first thing you're going to want to do um, is kind of come up with a goal for yourself. So before you really know how to do something, you need to figure out what it is you want to do, right? So I like using the SMART goals framework when I'm coming up with goals for myself. I think this is a, a system that like forces you to think about a goal that's you know, important to you on a personal level and also something that you can really measure your, your progress toward. So if you look at this graphic here, it sets it out piece by piece. So first of all, you wanna identify a specific goal, um, get as specific as you possibly can here. Um, and then you want it to be a measurable goal, meaning you want to be able to actually track your progress in an objective way. So that might be something like a distance that you want to be able to complete or a time that you want to hit for a certain distance. Then you want to see if that goal is attainable. So this can be tricky, um, especially for beginners, I think. But basically you want to choose a goal that's realistic and manageable for you. That's not going to get you in over your head. Next piece is to make sure that your goal is relevant. And what that means is that it's meaningful to you on a personal level. It's something that actually holds value for you. It's important to you in your life. And then the last thing is that you want your goal to be time bound. So you want to have a time frame uh, during which you want to achieve the goal. So you want to have like a, a set date that you want to complete that goal. And that might be a race that you are targeting on a specific date or with COVID going on, a time trial that you just want to do for yourself. You want to have a date in mind. It, it shouldn't be just open-ended. Um, so that's kind of the, the basics in terms of goal setting. And once you have a goal in mind, then you can start working on the, the details of your plan. Absolutely. So with everything that we have, you know, with uh, the, the SMART goals, I think some of the things that really, you know, ring true, you know, with this is just being able to, you know, figure out something that's important to you as the individual runner, like, you know, what is important to yourself, you know, don't listen to like, you know, anybody saying like what you, they think that you can do, like, what do you want to do? So that's like the big thing. Um, and the great thing about running, um, is that it's such a personal thing. Uh, you can go ahead and figure out, you know, what means the most to you. And, uh, when Emily talked about, you know, the things that are attainable, you know, realistic and manageable as a beginner runner, sure. That's super tricky. But it's also really, really awesome as a beginner runner, because if you choose to go ahead and do something and then you hit it, you can immediately go to the next thing. Um, Emily and I have posted goals for our 2021, and I know that our goals are uh, very different and um, kind of like talk to our different personalities. Like, you know, mine is just to go ahead and run a certain amount of miles uh, on average, you know, for the each week and to go ahead and hit like a very, very realistic um half marathon time. Well, I know Emily has very, you know, high expectations for herself, but that's the kind of athlete she is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I tend to work a little bit close to that unrealistic line, but um, <laughs> again, it, it's gonna, you know, it's all, it's all individual. It's ultimately, you know, on the, along the lines of like trying to come up with a realistic goal. I think this is a place where coaching can help having someone who's experienced, who knows, who knows your history as an athlete, who knows the details of like all the other stressors that you have going on in your life, um, you know, what kind of time you have available. That, it can be really helpful to talk that through with someone um, and have them help you figure out kind of like what you can achieve in the short term and where you might be able to go in the long term as well. So even if a beginner runner who, who is just getting started, can't run a 5k yet, their goal might be to run a 50k. If someone came to me and said that, I would say that's, that's not realistic for right now, but if knowing that that's what you want to work toward, that can help us set up all kinds of intermediary goals in the meantime to get, to get you there over the long haul. Yes. So basically, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I think about it. Um, you can have really lofty long-term goals, but sometimes you might need to come down to earth a little bit in the short term to set some in intermediate goals. Um, so you don't get really discouraged by, by your very, very, um, you know, like more aggressive goals that might take longer to complete. Absolutely. So we have a goal in mind now and in keeping in line with our beginners run event, let's say you ran, you know, either the one mile, the three mile or the five mile. And let's say for the sake of, um, you know, this event, you ran the one mile. And I'm a runner that ran one mile in 10 minutes. And like, that felt pretty cool. Like, I want to get faster. So 
where do I go from there? What's the next point, Emily? Awesome. So what I would say next is, well, let's think about what your week, what your week looks like on a week to week basis. What are your other responsibilities? What do you have to do? What days do you work? What's your schedule? What's your, what's your family life like? Basically, when are you going to be able to commit to running? You want to, again, be realistic about this. Um, you want to choose days when you really feel pretty sure you're going to be able to get your run in. For a beginner, I would say choosing to run on three days, at least three days a week, will be enough for you to improve. So some people are going to want to start out with a little bit more than that per week, but I think three days a week is a really great number for a true beginner. Um, on non-consecutive days, giving yourself like some day, uh, some rest in between run days is great. So if you can find three days of your week when you know you can commit to running, awesome. Um, if one of those days you have a little bit extra time, maybe on a weekend day, I would make that your long run day. So at first it might not be a super long run. It might just be a little bit longer than the other two runs, but that's gonna be helpful for you to have a time set aside so that as that distance gets longer and longer, you know that that's a day that you have time to complete a longer run. Absolutely. So for the plans that um, you know we have shared actually over on our Instagram and TikTok pages over here, I'm gonna just kind of share over here with you know week one of training and through week four of where we're at right now. You can see in these plans that we've created that we have three days and then that day that day off integrated. So this as a beginner's plan integrates um, both a little bit of like a run walk over here. That was week one. This is week two over here. And as you see, as we progress with these plans, they're all pretty similar over in regards to, you know, the workload over here in terms of like structuring. And that's also to go ahead and make sure that we are getting runners used to maintaining some sort of consistent schedule. So while this details out, you know, six days a week of running with one day off integrated in there, it's being able to still figure out what works out best, you know, for your, for your schedule. So this is just a sample and, you know, working with a coach is definitely a really good way to go ahead and detail out what works best for you as an individual. Definitely. And right then, Bill touched on another point that I think is important to note, which is that for a lot of beginners, using a run walk program can be really helpful at first. Um, so for programs like Couch to 5K maybe popularized this approach, but it's been out there for a long time. And I think a lot of people just do it intuitively. Um, if you can't run for if you can't run continuously for a long period yet, it's very helpful to break it up with periods of, of walking. And those can be scheduled out in like all kinds of different ways. Um, different plans will, will break it down differently. And ultimately you just kind of need to figure out what works for you. So we can't give any hard specifics there, but I think that can be a good place to start if you're having trouble running continuously. Absolutely. So, so with um you know now that we have you know figured out how to go ahead and figure out a goal for us that's awesome you know we know exactly what, what we would like to do in the future and now we already talked about like how to go ahead and structure out the week you know we're starting to feel really yeah. confident in what we're doing we're progressing on with our schedule we're starting to feel a little bit like invincible over here but um as we know that's kind of like you know the pitfall for runners so how do we go ahead and build that mileage over in a safe way yeah, so a couple points here that I would want to stress. One um, is that although your training is going to be progressing over time, week to week, you're going to want to build in recovery weeks as well. So it's not just going to be like linear increase every single week forever and ever. You're going to need some weeks that are down weeks to give your body a little bit of a chance to rest. Um, this is especially important when you're building your mileage up for the first time, because um, one thing that runners, I think, will often find, especially if they're already pretty fit from maybe playing another sport or maybe from, you know, like biking or swimming or something like that, is that like they feel like their their lungs, their heart feel OK when they're running. They feel like they can run quite a lot and it's all right. But your musculoskeletal system takes a long time. It takes longer than your heart and your lungs to adapt to the stresses of running. So you can put yourself at a pretty high risk for overuse injury if you just sort of go go for it right off the bat like that, even if you feel like you can. So it's really important to build in those recovery weeks. I like to build them in like every third or fourth week. So for a beginner, I would say maybe every third week, 
you want to reduce your overall running mileage or volume, maybe by like a third or half, depending on how you're feeling. And then on that fourth week, go ahead and build back right, build right back up to where you were before that rest week. You should be feeling pretty good after that, that um, down week. So that's a good way to, to kind of like monitor yourself and make sure that you're not pushing too hard. So with that, um, you know, we, uh, do we have any like guides or references that kind of keep us in check for, uh, you know, building that mileage? Yeah. So, I mean, as with all things in running, it is going to be a little bit individual. So you might have heard of the 10% rule for building mileage where you shouldn't increase your mileage by more than 10% from week to week. I think that's pretty common running lore. You'll see that on the forums and uh, in a lot of, you know, places online. I think that, um, the reality is that it's a little bit more complicated than that. So the 10% rule isn't really based on any firm science. It's kind of just lore, as I said. And if you think about it critically, it doesn't make a ton of sense for a new runner to only be able to increase their mileage by 10% if they're running very, very low volume already. So if you're only running three miles a week, you can probably increase by more than 10% because 10% would mean 0.3 more miles the next week. So you can probably increase at a faster rate when you're running of a lower mileage when you get up to a higher mileage that's when the percentage increase is going to get smaller because you're already running more miles so um as i said it's going to be a little different for everybody but here is a um a pretty good guideline that i like from the united endurance sports coaching association that kind of gives a maximum percent increase based on what your current training mileage is um and i like this because it really it, it puts it it puts it in pretty clear terms. And it, again, like I want to emphasize the maximum percent increase. It doesn't say that this is what you have to do every week. It just says, here's a guideline for the most you would want to do week by week. <laughs> so this is perfect for a runner like me because, you know, I, I like these hard numbers and telling me like, you know, how to not fly off the rails, how to not like, you know, it's almost like a speed limit um <laughs> to make sure that i don't like you know go ahead and like hit a sharp turn and i go ahead and fly off the cliff or anything like that you know these guidelines are certainly like helpful because i know that for myself i have been able to progress at some points where i go ahead and feel like invincible as i like mentioned before as a lot of runners feel you know you just keep progressing and progressing and progressing but there's got to be a point in which you know you kind of cap out at like what you're able to go ahead and do and um through um this uh, coaching organization with a lot of, you know, validated research has, uh, you know, shown that this, this is definitely, you know, a good guideline to go ahead and follow. Yeah, absolutely. So that in terms of where you're going to add that mileage, again, that's going to be a little bit individual, but you know, common ways to add the mileage would be to kind of gradually build that long run up for one thing. So you have that one day of the week when you're running a little bit longer, you might want to increase that a little bit, maybe just by mile a week. That's totally fine. Um, also, if your schedule allows for it, adding a, adding a day of running is another helpful way of building mileage. Um, starting out with just a really low volume day, a nice easy day, see how you feel for a few weeks, hold it there. That's another kind of common way of, of increasing your mileage overall. Absolutely. So, um, very cool, Emily. So, so far, getting just the restructure, we talked about figuring out a goal. What is yeah. in our heart? What do we want to do? Then we talked about figuring out how to go ahead and structure that week. And now we know how to go ahead and, you know, run that week safely and injury free. Hopefully yeah. you know, we followed everything, all the science, we followed our heart. We know how to do things the right way, but I am being told to run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, day off Thursday, run Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I guess, you know, run like that. But my kid's got soccer practice on Saturday, like all of a sudden. My kid wants to play soccer, like, you know, and like, you know, my other kid, you know, wants to do this. Uh, my wife wants to go ahead and do, you know, a, a whole nother thing. And like, I got to be all, all these places. I don't think I can run on Saturdays anymore. Like, you know, what's, what do I do? Like, should I just quit running? Like, what's, <laughs> what's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> just quit. Yeah. I think the answer is uh, clearly you just, you don't have time, Bill. Oh, man. I, is, are you sure no. there isn't another solution? Yeah, so the, the the real solution, I think, is this. Um, it can be easy to kind of see your training plan as just written in stone. Like this is, you know, you might get a plan out of a book or online or something like that. And, and you, you know, 
you want to follow it to the letter. And I've been guilty of this in the past as well. Like if the plan says run eight miles, I'm running eight miles. Like it doesn't matter if I have strep throat, like I'm doing it. And like, ultimately that doesn't really work very well for you in the long run. So the biggest thing I think that you need to learn how to do is be adaptable. And this is hard. Um, it can be sometimes hard to tell, especially like when you're first starting out, is this, because you know you're gonna get sore from from running especially at the beginning so you might not know like is this a day when i'm too sore to run is this normal soreness am i getting injured that kind of thing is very hard to kind of discern i think and it takes time but overall you're gonna need to learn how to adapt to things like illness injury family stuff coming up travel stuff coming up like we all deal with that and I think the number one thing to keep in mind is just don't stress about it. If you have to work late one day and you can't do your run, it's okay. It's really okay. Shift it to another day if you can, if it if it works with your schedule. Otherwise, if you have to take an unplanned day off every now and then, that's not the end of the world. The key is, you know, not making a huge habit of that. Overall, you want to be consistent. Consistency is absolutely key to succeeding in this sport. It's the number one most important thing I would say, but um, the biggest killer of consistency is getting injured and having to take time off, getting burnt out and just having no desire to run anymore because you're not motivated and you're too tired and you hate it. So, you know, at times you're gonna have to just take a day off or, or you know, maybe shorten your run or go slower than you thought you were going to that day. Like there are all sorts of ways that you can change your plan that will still get you where you want to be. Um, it's just, it, it does take time to figure out how to how to adapt to certain things. And that's another thing coaching can help with for sure. We have a lot of experience working with people and working with our own plans, of course, as well. Um, and I think sometimes getting reassurance from someone that, you know, it's okay to take this day off or it's okay to change this workout a little bit can really help. When you work with different coaches, especially with our program as well, uh, some great programs do something that they call as, a, as an intake evaluation. And that is a great way to go and evaluate, you know, with the runner and coach relationship to figure out what it is that, you know, the athlete is looking to go ahead and accomplish, as well as like a little bit about the personality and what they're willing to go ahead and like work with to go ahead and create a schedule. So it's kind of skipping like, you know, this, uh, bullet point of we have here the outline of being adaptable um a coach can kind of come into play of being the adaptable person for you to kind of tell you like you know what's up which is really cool um i have over here three books i have daniel's running formula which is probably backwards here that's okay i also have the hansen's marathon method which is another very famous book you know to go ahead and follow and i even have the complete idiot's guide to running as well too so three different pieces of literature that um i have able to, you know, have to go ahead and follow and try to go ahead and create training plans off of. But I can tell you as a you know, runner that has been running for quite a while now, I have never followed any of these plans to a complete T because there's always something that comes up. There's always something that is going to go ahead and uh, derail, um, you know, something that isn't including an injury um, or burnout. You know, I still want to go ahead and run, but you know, being out over in the Northeast over here, some days you just have like, you know, a terrible amount of snow and you're not going to be able to get yeah. your workout in unless you absolutely have to go ahead and shovel out the track. Like you know, sometimes, you know, you can be crazy enough to go ahead and do that, but really you don't have to. Um, and you can make the decision for yourself or you can go ahead and look to go ahead and have a coach to help you go ahead and like work through that. But the main purpose that we're trying to get across over here is that never beat yourself up for going ahead and missing, you know, a run because you absolutely can't do it because life gets in the way. And absolutely do not force a run if you, you know, absolutely hate the activity that you're doing or if it's going to go ahead and, you know, break you. You know, that these are things we do not want to see happen to you. Yeah, I'll second that for sure. Um, and yeah, I'll, I, I also have a stack of, of uh, running books that I really like to look at um, when I'm making plans for myself or for other people. But again, I don't, I don't tend to follow them to the letter, to the letter. I kind of like to take bits and pieces of them and, and uh, like use them um, for my own purposes, depending on what I'm trying to do. And I think different, different coaches and different, you know, training plans 
will have different philosophies. And as you get more experience with running and start to have goals that are more performance based, like wanting to break a certain time or, you know, get, get a lot faster, things like that. You'll, you'll see, there's just a, there's a ton of information out there about different types of workouts and how to structure your workouts. And we're just kind of not touching on any of that for now, because we want to keep this real simple for people who are just starting out. Um, I think that on the topic of like speed work, things like that, you might see, see that in beginner plans. Um, my my own philosophy on that is that if you're a brand new runner you're going to get the most benefit out of just running more um gradually safely building your mileage running it all at a fairly easy conversational pace that's going to build you a huge aerobic engine and you're going to get faster just from that alone and it's going to be a safe and enjoyable way for you to do it once you're running you know a pretty like once you're running let's say 20 30 miles a week for a while you're injury free, you're healthy, you're loving running. Then we can talk about adding in some some faster stuff, some some workouts here and there. But I think when you're first getting started, don't even think about pace. Just think about getting out the door on those days that you've decided are going to be your running days. Try to be consistent with it while remaining adaptable, um, and you will see improvement absolutely. Awesome. So that was. Fantastic stuff so far. So I will say for anybody that's hanging out and watching our stream, if you guys do have any questions you want to go ahead and populate over in our chat, feel free to start doing so while we go ahead and get over to our last point, which is probably the most important point over here when it comes to any runner, I believe. So let's go ahead and you know go through all of this. Again, we have a goal. Great. I am pumped. I am looking towards the future. I am so excited that right running is going to go ahead and get me there. You told me how to go ahead and structure my week. Fantastic. Now I have something to go ahead and be able to work with while also being able to build my mileage in a safe way so I stay injury free and knowing that it's okay to be adaptable while still remaining somewhat consistent because uh, one of the things that I've heard of recently uh, over in I believe psychology is that when you go ahead and do something 20 times, that's how you develop um, a habit. So that's why in the plans that we had before for January for the beginners plans that I showed off running, you know, six times a week, you know, for four weeks over in January, you know, that's going to put you well over that, you know, 20 different runs. Um, and if you miss some of those days, like that's okay, because you would have still gotten 20 if you miss, um, someone else can do the math for me, but I know definitely, I think it's four days. You can miss up to four days and you still have 20. Yeah, so <laughs> with all that being said, I am doing everything right to a T. The final question is, how do I know if my plan is working? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, the most, the most obvious thing that you might think of is just, are you getting faster? Can you run for a longer distance? Say, say at first you couldn't run for more than five minutes without walking. Now you can run two miles without walking. I mean, that's, that's huge. So that there, there are going to be obvious ways that you can tell if, if your plan is working. And those are mostly going to have to do with like, yes, are you running faster? Are you running longer? Um, are you, does a run that used to feel like a seven out of 10 difficulty to you now feel like it's a four or a five out of 10? That's big progress. So those are some ways. Um, I think one thing that you might overlook though, that might even be more important than that is, are you staying healthy? Like, do you feel good? when you get out for your run? Um, or do you feel kind of like you're breaking down? Do you feel like you're on the verge of injury? Have you already gotten injured? Um, do you feel healthy basically? Do you feel strong? Do you feel motivated? Are you still like engaged with the process? Are you enjoying it? I think those are all important questions that sometimes we forget to ask ourselves because we're too focused on like performance based outcome measures, if that makes sense. So. We're all thinking about just getting faster um, or, you know, building up our, our long run distance or whatever it is that are, that we're trying to achieve, but we're not really thinking about like, what is, what does this process actually feel like to me? Like, is it something that I'm, that, that I'm enjoying and that is improving my life in a, in a good way. So um, I think it's important Dan, to ask yourself those questions like throughout the course of your training. And if you're, if you're answering no to any of these things, then you want to think about why that might be the case. Um, 
are you recovering well? Are you sleeping? Um, are you eating enough? Are you eating the right things? Are you doing too much too soon? Say you, you're actually pushing that mileage increase way above whatever the maximum percent was that, that we showed you. Um, maybe you're skipping too many runs. Maybe you took that a little bit too far and you know, you skipped one and then you kind of got in the habit of skipping all of your Sunday long runs. Um, 20 skipped, it could be any number of things. 20 skipped <laughs> runs, new habit. 20 skipped runs. So um, it could be a lot of different things. Hopefully you'll be able to identify what it is. But again, like this is another place where I think a coach can be helpful. Um, talking it out with someone, showing them your training and what you've been doing. Maybe they can help you um, figure out where you're missing something um, that, could, that could help you moving forward. So, yeah, what do you think, Bill? Yeah, I think that um, a lot of this stuff has rung true for things that I think about and experience, you know, with running, um, you know. I think that um, I've experienced the burnout. I've uh, experienced the uh, just focus on just like performance and everything. Um, even going back to different things like, you know, realistic goals and setting things and like markers for different things um you know i i, I remember at one point i uh, had a goal that was set all the way into april and i started in like august that's a really long time to just be training for like a goal which is like one thing like over on my mind so you know yeah. i really just like kind of like grew tired of like you know the goal actually um you know maybe it could have broken up a little bit sooner like you know a little bit more um and i could have talked uh, you know with the coach about that to figure that out a little bit better but it's it really actually comes down when you think about it as we talk through this to communication and it can be communication with the coach but also communication with yourself i keep talking about it but running is such a personal thing like you know it's it's you versus yourself and you know we'll kind of wrap up here here by you know really touching on this be fast beginners run event that really it is such a personal event it's not a race it's either you run one mile you run three miles or you run five miles and hell, hell you don't even need to run it you can go ahead and walk that distance and you can go ahead and submit that over on our link below at the run sign up right below in this page over here um if you search the be fast beginners run you can go ahead and find it sign it sign up for it and you can go ahead and uh just go ahead and submit your time to go ahead and start off your year um we have finisher certificates that we're handing out to people in a virtual way so that way we can go ahead and have your recorded time down and hopefully you can go ahead and best it through the year with the advice that we've given you over here so I want to go ahead and give a shout out as well to everything that we talked about here as well is going to be shared in similar feelings with the local stores that you know we uh, um, are over in our area that are supporting us. And that's the Running Place again in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, the Scranton Running Company over in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Bryn Mawr Lo Running Company with four locations, one in Bryn Mawr, one in Media, one in Westchester, and their Emmaus Run-In location in Emmaus, PA, and Philadelphia Runners, five locations, Center City, University City, Glenn Mills, Manny Young, and King of Prussia. So all of those, all of those stores are fantastic. They have an awesome crew of people, and um, you know they know this stuff just as well. They can go ahead and reinforce it um, just the same. Definitely, we really appreciate them working with us on this. And uh, as Bill said, highly recommend you guys check them out if you're in the area. Um, all awesome stores with awesome people behind them. So um, yeah. So for the rest of this week that we have going on over here, if you're interested in watching, you know, more streams that we have going on tomorrow at the same time, seven o'clock, we are going to go ahead and have a gear up talk. So talking about dressing for success, and that isn't just about footwear. It's about apparel and accessories as well, too, to keep you running uh, safe, keep you running healthy, keep you looking good. All the great things, you know, that you know, are really important. Then on Wednesday, we're going to go ahead and be talking about, you know, how to go ahead and track your data, you know, and introduce you to Strava, uh, Garmin, Map My Run, all these different things that are resources for you to go ahead and track your performance, um, which are really good measures that'll go ahead and help keep you motivated. And for Thursday, uh, we are going to be talking about running and mental health. Um, running is a very great way to go ahead and exercise, you know, the mind and a great way to think. But we're going to go ahead and you know be able to go ahead and talk about. Uh, some of the finer things when it comes to the mind and how running can support it, but not necessarily replace it. So a lot of really good, you know, deep talk about that for that session. And then I'm going to let en Emily introduce the Friday topic and talk about the other leg of our business, Be Fast Running. Yeah, so on Friday, I will be sharing some 
thoughts about the importance of strength and mobility training for runners. And I'll be sharing some, um, basically just some basic exercises that you can start incorporating into your training. Um, and kind of, so in my, my other uh, career, well, as part of this, but basically I, I'm trained as a physical therapist. So I work as a physical therapist and specialize in working with runners. So that conversation will be kind of from that perspective, from my perspective as a physical therapist who has worked with a lot of injured runners um, in the hopes of helping you stay injury free. And um, also in the hopes of getting more people on board with strength training, because I, I think a lot of runners neglect that area in their training. I've been guilty of that myself. I don't like it as much as I like to run. Um, so I don't really like to do it, but it's important. It, it really has documented um, benefits for performance, especially, but can also help you avoid injury and can definitely help you recover from injury. So it's a really important thing to try to get on board with. So we'll be talking about that. And again, showing you some exercises you can get started with. Absolutely. So, you know, we are really here just in the business to go ahead and help our running community over here. So we really appreciate you guys hanging out here for a talk, you know, whether you're watching this live or go ahead and watching the recording of this video. Thank you very much for being able to, to sit here with us and uh, have a good run. Yeah. Thanks guys. Have a good one. And hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.